Hello everybody, welcome back to X-Plane 11. My name is Micah and today we're going to cover how to land the 737-800 Zebo mod using auto land. This is of course an ILS Cat 3 procedure that you can utilize inside of the 737-800 aircraft and today we'll be showing you how to do that. Right now we're cruising at 17,000 feet coming from Seattle heading to Portland and uh, we'll go ahead and jump inside hit the wrong button there go ahead and jump inside the uh, cockpit as you can see we are cruising at 17,000 feet approximately 292 indicated airspeed so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and start going through our pre-descent procedures as we are getting closer to our top of descent as you can see and what that means is we're gonna pull up the chart we're gonna look at our ILS frequency uh, any VORs you might want to use we're gonna make sure we're gonna be a um, using our abiding by the altitude and uh, speed restrictions flying the auto land is not much different than your regular ILS there is a few differences that you'll need to note uh, which will be really as we get closer to the airport and uh, take care of business there as you can see X checklist has already notified me saying hey your descent checklist needs to be uh, go ahead and start getting that done as we are approaching our top of descent so we'll go ahead and do that for it we're going to bring up our lighting and we're going to go take off uh, landing right and then we'll let him go we're going to be descending here in a second we're going to pull up our chart now now you can use sky vector you can use navigraph whatever you want to pull your charts from uh, they should all be usable here and there's a couple things you'll need to note when it comes to this portion of the chart First thing you need to note is your lock frequency. This is going to be your ILS frequency, which is 110.5. You're going to need to know your final approach uh, course, which is 103 degrees. You should also know where you intercept the glide slope, which will be at intersection of Powell's at 2,000 feet. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to scroll down a little bit here. And you're going to see missed approach. That's, of course, telling you how to do a missed approach. Our missed approach altitude is 5,000 feet. You need to remember that as well. So like I said, our ILS frequency is going to be 110.5. So we can go and input that into our system here. So if we go here, we find actually it's already inputted. So you can tell last time I flew, an ILS approach was actually here to this runway. So 110.5 is in the active on both the captain and the first officer side. So we're good there. Courses according to our approach chart is going to be 103 degrees and our intercept altitude will be 2000. Our bank angle stays the same. Uh, landing performance calculations, that's already completed. We'll go and bring up our landing uh, approach reference sheet as well. We'll go and select uh, flaps 30. That's what we'll be using today. And auto brakes, we're going to use uh, three. Or, I'm sorry, two. Fasten seatbelts 15 minutes prior to landing. We're about there now, so we'll go ahead and indicate the fasten seatbelts. And move on to our next portion of the descent checklist. As we're passing through a transition altitude, which we're actually below, we want to make sure our terrain radar is activated for a first officer, which it is now. That way we know we're not going to hit any mountains or anything. We want to make sure our altimeters are set to our local Q and H. Now, they are already set to our local q and I've already done that. Again, you do that using the uh, knobs right here and then also on your secondary as well. So that's already set there. Uh, we also want to make sure, again, standby altimeter is set. And we're going to do the approach mode, APP, um, that allows this to be actually used as an ILS as well if needed. Once we start passing through 10,000 feet, we'll go ahead and start turning our landing lights on as well as our run only turnoff lights. And we'll make our announcement that we're going to be in preparation for landing. Now, in regards to this ILS approach, just like any other ILS approach, and as I've covered before, you want to make sure that you know your glide slope angle, which is 3 degrees. You want to make sure that you know the different uh, categories of your ILS, what is allowed here. And as you can see, the category 3C is not authorized for this uh, actual particular runway. However, we're basically going to be doing it anyway. Uh, normally you would have your minimums right here as you see RVR, which is you're your basically bouncing off the ground with the radio, is six, uh, six feet. Um, so really that's you're all the way down to the ground, right? 
But we'll be doing auto land just to show you this how this works. I have done auto land on this runway before, so I am uh, certain that it does function properly. So that's kind of what we want to focus on in the charts. Now there's a lot more to it, of course, and I'm just going over the brief synopsis so that we can uh, do what we need to do to be able to land this aircraft. I'm going to go ahead and reset my uh, minimums because uh, that was for when I was taken out of Seattle for my autopilot. So that can be reset and removed. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to manage my descent here make sure I don't get too fast, making sure I'm not too high or too low. Again, uh, to get a good landing, you always want to have a good uh, approach into the airport. Now, whether that is going to be an auto land or you're going to be manually landing the aircraft, you still need to have a good approach. And the way you get a good approach is that you manage your descent. If you just let your aircraft go, then you're more than likely at some point going to be either too fast, too high, or too low. So make sure that you're paying attention to your aircraft. Don't just tune out. You want to make sure that you understand how this aircraft is going to be descending into the area and things you need to pay attention to. Now you notice that there is some mountains areas uh, on our approach here and we can see them right now uh, as we get lower that's going to, the visibility is going to get lower and lower at least it's supposed to that's how I have it set up whether or not that is the case we will find out uh, but because you, you see the terrain radar is already pinging off of it so we should be fine there. I'm going to switch just to engine on the MFD I think everything looks right, so we'll go ahead and continue on our descent here, and uh, as we get closer, I will catch back up with you, and we'll go ahead and do this ILS auto land here in Portland. All right, we are now getting closer to our final approach. Uh, we're about to hit our deceleration point to meet the uh, speed restrictions at Voodoo for 210, 210 knots. We're also going to be hitting our top of descent at uh, 5,000 until we hit our next point. As you can see, we've begun our deceleration point. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of uh, speed brakes uh, to bring us down to that speed restriction in time. What I'm going to be looking at is by the time I hit nut, I'm going to be dropping flaps to at least one. By the time I hit uh, to my final approach, I want to already be at flaps 10. So. Uh, you want to be able to manage those flaps as you're coming in. That's going to help you manage your speed and uh, let you be in preparation for landing. It's going to be just, it's just simplifies it. The, you want to be, go ahead and thinking ahead, thinking several waypoints ahead. Where do I want to be when I hit here? Where do I want to be when I get to this waypoint? That way you're going ahead, you're planning ahead, and that's going to lead forward to a more successful landing. So we're hitting our 210, so I'm going to go and drop speed brakes. And if we bring up the chart here, I'll tell you what I'm, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be hitting Heron. At Heron, I want to be already, I want to be at 10. That's what I'm saying. So, I want to be flaps 10 at Heron. Powell's, I'm going to be flaps 15. Um, once, at, at least flaps 15, hit flaps 15 there. Once I get uh, closer in here, uh, about right here, about three miles from the, from the actual touchdown point, I'll drop flaps to 30. Uh, landing gear, of course, will come out at Powell's as well. So, um, speed again managing that speed so you, you're not uh, overdoing it so I'm gonna go and drop flaps to one here in preparation of getting to nut allowing my aircraft to slow down just letting it keep slowing down see we just ping the ILS uh, identifier Ida Papa Delta X-ray verify that it is the same Ida Papa Delta X-ray it is so we are confirmed that we have initiated on the ILS now. I'm going to go ahead and set my runway heading as such. I'm going to go flaps 2 now. and flaps 5. Again, all managing that speed as we come in. Key thing to taking approach to the 737 or any aircraft really is managing that speed. I'm 
Now remember here and I want to be a flaps 10. We can go ahead and activate the VOR lock that is in the standby right now as you see. LNAV is still in control. Once we establish on the VOR localizer it will go ahead and activate the VOR lock. And drop the flaps 10. Before we activate that approach, we're waiting for this diamond to get within these right here. Once these are within these uh, first two good. dots here, then we can activate that uh, ICVOR lock just activated. But uh, once we get between these two diamond, this diamond gets between these two dots, we can activate the approach phase. So we're pretty much dead on the money right now. So we can go and activate that approach phase see that we have signal channel but we're going to be doing auto land which means we need to also hit command B essential make sure you hit that command B that's what's going to give you that auto land all category 3 approaches you also hit command B which is essential while you put the ILS frequency in the second as well remember at PALS we're going flat 15 and gear down for that glide sub to activate as well. All right, flat 15, gears coming down. Missed approach, altitude's gonna be 5,000. Set that, runway heading is set, contact ATC, we have it. Airspeed bug, we're gonna go 160. Flaps 10, landing gear 15. Let's continue, speed brake lever, we're gonna go ahead and Activate that recall. We're good there. We're going to check our approach speed is 139. So we're going to drop 139. Let it start slowing ourselves down. Flaps 25. Four miles out, go flaps 30. Landing configuration, gear down, flaps down 30. Speed set 139. Looks like we're all good. Taxi light is on. We are in landing configuration. And again, we're letting the aircraft fly this itself. We're not going to be touching it until we actually touch down on the ground. Thousand feet stabilized, missed approach altitude set. We are not worrying about that. And there's the air port. Now, obviously, we can see it in an actual category three landing. We wouldn't be able to see it at this point. However, I wanted to show you that this aircraft will bring you in. You have to trust your aircraft, trust your instrument. Oh look, there's an aircraft taking off right there. So you have to trust it, you gotta trust it. It will bring you down and it will bring you down for a landing.
All right, we hit the ground. Got a little bit of crosswind coming on right now. Reversers are coming out. Yeah, definitely got this crosswind pushing us. Having to fight it. Right. Not the best auto landing I have ever had, uh, but you guys get the idea here uh, when it comes to actually uh, flying an auto land approach. Hopefully, you guys learned something today and uh, you enjoyed as well. If you did, don't forget to like the video below. Go ahead and subscribe as well. And uh, if you want to support me monetarily, you can do so as well. Hit that join button uh, below this video, or you can go to my channel and you can do it there as well. Uh, what that does is that it makes you join the Flight Club. The Flight Club is a uh, members-only club. You get access to members-only Discord. You get access to the livery that is on this aircraft as well. And you get cool emojis and stuff as well. So. Anyway, guys, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time up in the sky.